Alrighty, everyone. Welcome to the circus auction. That's only two. It counts. It counts. They were still there. <gasps> so, we are ready to start bidding on attractions. All you circus entrepreneurs ready to build your circus. Well, why don't we start the bidding for the first item at five dollars? Uh, I'll bid twenty. Hi, twenty dollars. Hmm. They only have twenty in front of them. Hmm. Oh, and they only have a hundred in front of them. I'll bid a hundred. Ah, oh, man, are you kidding me? That's exactly what I was gonna bid. How would you block me like that? Sold. Ah, oh, man, a hundred dollars. Why do you even want it that bad? What do you mean? Of course I want it. It's a big top. <laughs> And I'm back in my small top to talk about Big Top. And kind of the main gist is it's an auction game by none other than Taiki Shinzawa. That name might ring a bell if you follow board game tables because they have done two of his amazing trick takers in the past, Ghost of Christmas and Nine Lives. But this isn't a trick taker. It is an auction game where the hook or the premise is that the bids that other players want to make is in front of them. So if someone maybe in the future wants to bid a two or a three, it is shown in front of them. So players use that information to kind of block and push players maybe out of their comfort zone in interesting ways. Let's cover a little bit of the basics at the table. And before we continue on, just know that Borgen Tables sent me a prototype. So not only should you take everything I say with a grain of salt, but also the <laughs> some components might come across as possibly printed on paper because they were printed on paper more so than this printed on paper because this is paper you, you get the idea all right let's go to the table hey you made it to the table nice you only have to keep watching a little bit longer but here we're going to teach you how to build your very own circus you know my whole life people have come up to me and said taylor i want to build a circus i went in on this clown economy i know there's money to be made and I want to make it. And they've seen movies like It, or It 2, or It, or Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, and they say, oh, there's, there's a lot of moolah in the makeup. And I say, you're, uh, you're right, and I'll teach you how. So first, you need a tent. So everyone grabs a tent, and it's a shield of sorts to hide your money. But really, tents are important because a circus happens in, in tents, right? If it happens outside of tents, it's kind of just a felony. So hugely important for a successful circus to have a tent. Second, ringmaster, everyone gets a ringmaster because who's gonna master your rings if not for them? But also it gives players a little bit of incentive at the start, which is, which is sensational. So everyone will get a ringmaster and then everyone gets money and money goes behind their shield or inside their tent of sorts. And what money does is it's what players use to bid, this is an auction game, on certain attractions. And the last thing is the attractions. So you got anything from acrobatics, which are so much fun in a circus, to, you know, something everybody travels miles and miles for is a tower of chairs. Because you can't see that in the big city. And let me actually, you know what? I'm gonna do something crazy. I'm gonna move the camera to give you a better view of the table, to show you a little bit of the gameplay of the auctions. Hello from up there, you're pretty tall. So here we are, bird's eye or your eye view of the game. So everyone again is gonna have a ringmaster and then everyone is gonna be dealt a random attraction and the start player, who is the person most afraid of clowns, love it. It's always great to be able to know you can always be start player in a game. So I will start because I don't like clowns I'll draw a card from the top of the deck. Every player will do this on their turn. They'll draw a card from their deck. And so they're gonna have two cards and they're gonna, oh gosh, got two lovely oh, clowns. So 
you're gonna pick one of these jokers and it's gonna go in front of the table and then players are going to start bidding on it. And when a player bids on it, if they ever bid a number that's on the card, you're gonna take a coin from the bank and put it on that number. So if this player over here bid one, they would put a coin onto that space. So then the auction moves to the next player. Now if this player were to bid a two, notice on their ringmaster, it has a two on their board. So if you ever bid a number that is in front of you, you may take a coin from behind your sheet and put it on top of that number. And then also this right here has a two on it as well. So then this will be covered because they bid two. It comes to me, I have a three on mine. I'm gonna bid three. So a token covers the three there. I can cover on mine the three spot with one of my tokens. And so bidding goes around and around and around. So how it works is if you win the auction, you pay the money that you spent to the person who put it up for auction. So since we put this up for auction and this person just spent 10 on it, they're gonna get this in front of them, boop, and then they're gonna pay us, let's imagine this is $10, <laughs> they're gonna pay us $10. So it goes right into our bank. If we would have won that, we would just pay the bank instead of another player. So then that's one auction down, look at us go. The next person will just draw a card, they'll pick one of their cards, and then that will go up for auction. We'll keep doing this. So you might be wondering, well, why do I want coins on my cards? Well, first off, as you could tell, if a coin gets on the card because it came from the bank and then the person wins the card, now they just have access to these coins. So that's pretty nice, right? It's almost like they got a discount for when they bought this card. Also, uh, hugely important in this game is you only get to score the points on the cards. So like, as you can see, points are in the, the top corner over here. So this is worth 12 points or all our ringmasters are worth three points. You only get to score those points if you cover all of those bid spaces over the course of the game. Once you do that, you're gonna take all the coins that are covering it. So like, let's say in the future, I had bid four, seven, and then on this card, maybe I bid nine. So I fully complete the card. I'm going to get all those coins, tap it, and then now I actually have three points for the end of the game. And what's cool is those coins are now back in my bank. When you go to pay something, you would always pay with the coins that are in front of you here, but obviously you don't wanna do that because you're trying to complete these cards and score points. So that's the flow of the game. You're just gonna go around and around and around and around until in the bottom part of the deck is a fin card much like a shark, it will end the game immediately. So what are these cards? What are these crazy attractions that we're trying to bid on? Let's start off with some basic attractions like plate spinning. As you can see, it just has some basic bidding if you do win it, and then just some points, just some flat points, nothing too special. I don't think, I mean, there's that much special about plate spinning. I kind of feel like those kids in high school who had their binders and they would spin like this. I don't know if that's applicable for you. Then you have cards that have powers, like this one here, the contortionist, where, yeah, there were some points and they have, you know, some basic slots you can bid on, but this symbol up here lets you, when you complete this card, be able to put a coin anywhere on any other card. So it lets you complete other cards sooner, which is super useful for those weird bids that you just can't quite get. Here's another example of a card we have the Tower of Chairs. As you can see behind me, perfect reenactment. But the important thing about the Tower of Chairs is something I haven't covered yet, which are stars. So stars only exist on six cards in the deck. So kind of rare. And the crazy thing about stars is if you don't have any completed cards with at least one star on it over the whole course of the game, you lose, you lose, you lose. You lose the game. You need a star. So players might be focusing on all those points, which are good, that's how you win the game, but how you even are considered or qualified to win the game is trying to win cards with stars, which creates a wild situation where if a card with a star comes up and it's at the end of the game and a player doesn't have a star yet, you can ramp up the bidding like crazy. It creates this amazing flow of the game where Yes, you need points. Obviously players are bidding over these cards that are points the whole game, but when a star comes out, it's like an event and players are rabid for them. <sighs> well, we all know it was coming. The dreaded clowns. That's right. 
as you can see here, clowns kind of give you points for certain strategies. So maybe they give you one point per completed card, or maybe two points for every completed card underneath five points. Or maybe this one over here, which gives you a point per every two coins. So they can kind of help with certain strategies where you might want to make people pay you a bunch of money. And then you keep a bunch of money for yourself and go for that card. And then you'll get a bunch of points for all the coins you got. And as you can see, I'm putting flour on my face to become a clown. It's kind of like that saying where you do something long enough, you become what you hate. And whew, I don't like clowns. And this is a sad moment for me. It's a tough moment for me. Do you think when they printed all purpose on the flower that they, they assumed it could be for this purpose? Alrighty, so those are the cards and that's mostly how to play Big Top. As you can see, there's some interconnecting mechanisms. There's a fun kind of balance between what players want and what they're willing to give away. I think what's really cool is when you have those two cards in hand when you're about to auction, it's kind of like love letter, you know? The card you're looking at the whole time and then the card you just drew. What do I want to auction? So there's never really too much AP for what gets auctioned and the heart of the gameplay really is that auction. A huge part of the game is blocking. You can see ahead of time, like this player has a two and a four in front of them. So I'm gonna bid a five. I know they want to complete that card. So I just need to make sure to block them every chance I get. I've never seen an auction game where I know what the person's about to bid. In some auction games, if someone wants something really bad, you know they're gonna bid high. But it's so funny to look down at the table and just see exactly that this person wants to bid six, a nine, and a four. And to play off that, right? So what do you do? Do you build five? Do you build seven? But what if you win it <laughs> and you don't want to win it and you're just trying to make players bid a little higher or maybe bid a little less efficiently than they want. But what's cool is there's always a time where a player is going to be the first to bid. So players aren't too stuck, especially with some of the lower bids, like a, a two here. You're never out of the system to kick off that bid and make sure a two is actually bid on your cards. So players, they always have a chance. And I feel like there's a really good balance between what players can do and what they want to do. A really funny thing that this game does is it has players bidding on things that they don't necessarily want because it helps them try to complete things that they previously bid on. And what I see that does is it adds so many bids to the, uh, the flow of the game that players who actually do want it are, are flustered in ways, and they see more activity on items. And it's kind of funny because oftentimes you'll see someone's bid and you'll try to evaluate where, do they want that? Or are they just trying to complete their own thing? Or is it both, right? And sometimes that is a sweet spot and you're bidding where it is both. Yes, I just bid 12 to complete my tightrope walker, but I actually really want this sword swallower because they're worth 12 points. Completing a card feels so great. You get all those coins back, it feels so satisfying. Or winning a bid on a card that is covered in coins feels so good because it's an influx of cash and the card's mostly complete. And that's part of the really interesting strategy is where if a card comes out and it's your first turn to bid, and like in this situation, right, it's I have a two, a four, a three, and a five, and I can, you know, bid a two or four to help my own situation. But if I really want this card, I kind of want to bid three right? So that the next player might bid five. And it's a weird kind of, I don't want to say co-op, <laughs> but we're kind of working together to build this card's value, possibly. It's a really interesting tool to watch because if someone bids, you know, at the very start, if there's three, five, you know, seven, nine, and 11, like for this sword swallower here, if someone bids four right off the bat, they didn't want this card to be fully completed. They didn't want it to be that valuable. Because oftentimes, if players really want a card, which is a good amount of time, they'll slow bid on it, right? To kind of increase the value, like cover that three, cover that five, and then make it to where once they win this card, it's already completed and they get the cash. I think it's interesting where this game, unlike other auction games, the minutia of bidding is super important. The reason someone would bid a four rather than a three is super impactful. Whereas in other games, a lot of times auctions are like, 
okay, I bid a 10, that person bid an 11 just to beat me, right? Or bid a 12 just to beat me. In this game, did they bid the 12 because it completes the card or completes their card? Or were they blocking me? There's a lot of like bluffs and double bluffs and feints in the bidding that I don't think is quite readily apparent at the start. Now you might be watching this and seeing the fact that I unintentionally have on tour in the background there, not on purpose, but you might be saying Taylor, you corporate shill, you, you, you're you in the pocket of big table uh, and you're just saying nice things about this game, but I'll, I'll speak the truth. So one of the things to consider about this game, a possible critique, is that the game hinges on, uh, I think this is true of all auction games, but I'll, I'll get into it. The game hinges on the fact that the deck is super important, especially those stars and knowing the deck makeup, knowing how many cards have stars on them, knowing when to watch out for huge cards. Like there's a card in the game that's worth 20 points, ginormous, and making sure to either prepare for that by having enough coins or prepare for that where you know if someone really wants it, how to block them. So I think it's a game where the first time through and possibly the second time through, players are just kind of getting their feet wet. I think the game blossoms when you know the cards. And I think the first play and the second play are totally valid, but it does come to a point where players, especially new players, I think they don't know the value of cards yet. Again, this is kind of a, just a true fact of auction games really, but they don't know the value of cards yet. They don't know how to block other players really well because that's a huge part of this game. It's a dynamic that I don't think is mm, noticed too often by players who, who start the game. It's something that is, I mean, it's subtle and it's, it's hard to, to pick up on. And then also like to prepare for those big cards like this one or the fact that one of the clowns just lets you flip over the top card and win it. So I think deck familiarity and mechanism familiarity is something that when I show this to first players, they might not pick it up <laughs> as readily. But when I play with players who, who know the deck, who've played at least like a few times or something, then you pick up on it really well. And I mean, it's tough. It's something to where like, if it's a player driven economy, right? And it's an auction game where the players are the only balancing thing. If you have people who are not as knowledgeable yet about the deck or they're having trouble evaluating the strength of cards, then <laughs> the game sometimes can, can, can fall to that. And uh, again, it's not a con because if, if all the first players are just like overbidding or underbidding or letting players get really good cards or really cheap, then it's just like, hey, you know, you just didn't know the system too well and next time you're gonna get it. But yeah, so if I had to give a caveat, I'd say maybe the first <laughs> player two of this is players just learning the flow and learning the system. So there's that, see? I'm not a shell. Hi, I'm the guy from the intro who got blocked. I wanted to bid 100 and I couldn't. But I'm here to tell you the part I love about the game is how you can block a card from getting added to the game at all. What do I mean by that? Well, players on their turn, they'll draw a card and they'll pick which of the two cards in their hand goes to auction. That means the whole game, you can keep a card from getting into the game at all. Maybe it's a card with a star on it and you make star cards even more rare. Or maybe it's a card that values big money and you don't want the person who's going big money to get it. Or maybe you make them go for it at the end and they're like, Ugh, I really want it. So you make them bid higher and higher and higher. But you know, that kind of defeats the purpose of big money. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to say, because I don't think I said it when I had more facial hair, that I love the fact that you can have just a little taste, little influence on what actually gets auctioned in the game. Anyway, back to you, uh, per person. I don't know, uh, back to you, uh, back to you. <laughs> here we are at the end of the video, or I guess the fin of the video. We're here with my favorite circus attraction, Claude. And I hope that kind of showed off why I like Big Top. Again, unlike other auction games where the bid is a little bit two dimensional, like was the person bidding high because they want to crank up the prize or do they really want it? The fact that the players have those cards in front of them that kind of give another dimension, a little nuance to the bidding. I really enjoy that. And if nothing else, I hope you are okay with just a video where I didn't make that whole circuses are intense joke. So I take that as a personal win. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. And check out the Kickstarter link.